Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today I thought I would just make a little video talking about all the cool games that I'm uh, anticipating and looking forward to coming out this year. Most of them are anime related, but I'll, I'll include some other ones for you other genre explorers like me. So first up, we're gonna talk about Eternites. Not really talk about, but it's a game, doesn't have a release date, but it looks really, really cool. It's an action-heavy game, not an arena fighter like we normally play, but it has some really, really gorgeous graphics, very, very well-implemented anime style, and um, for those of you who are into it, it's got quite a emphasis on waifu dynamics, so <laughs> there's that as well. But as you can see here in the trailer, really, really gorgeous design, really, really... Uh, like game developers are finding such good ways of Im implementing like an anime aesthetic of like the drawing cartoon style in a 3D video game and this is another one that I think does it really well. So a bunch of characters to play, <laughs> they've got powers, they're waifus and you're a cool edgy guy that can <laughs> ride a motorbike and float with people. What more could you want? And yeah, unfortunately, no release date as of yet, but it is going to be this year, allegedly. <laughs> and does that um, uh, title screen remind anyone else of any other game that includes the word Knights? Possibly Gotham Knights? <laughs> it's weirdly inspired. Okay, the next game is going to be My Hero Ultra Rumble. Another game that weirdly has no release date, or I don't even think there's confirmation that it's coming out this year. But I'm putting it in here because it's had two open betas where the game, like, worked and yeah, they're gonna add more characters, but I have a feeling the reason this game is really under wraps is more of um, a weird licensing anime game issue situation more than how much they're ready. So, this game is a mystery, but I'm sure if you're on this channel you've seen stuff about it or even participated in the open betas because they were pretty fun. It's a cool, like, Fortnite-style arena game. Oh. Peggy 12. I guess I can play the trailer, even though there was one. But you're, you're in the massive training dungeon, you can walk around, pick any character, you've got projectiles and abilities you can use, and you kind of just, like, want to defeat everyone and not die. And just like the Fortnite other arena battle games, there's, like, the, the wall that comes in, and slowly you'll be in the very center, just battling off against one person, and yeah, the game looks cool, there's really, really cool looking abilities, and a diverse amount of abilities. There's a lot of reused assets from the My Hero Wants Justice games, but there's also a lot of new assets, and new abilities, and new characters. So, it is honestly a game I'm really looking forward to, even though I'm usually a little bit skeptical of, um, this kind of style of game, where you can tell it's a vehicle for microtransactions, but I think the vehicle it's pretty promising. It, it looks pretty fun, and that's all I have to say. I'll definitely play it when they finally tell us more. <laughs> and next is also a kind of an interesting one, only announced recently. Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi number 4 was randomly announced. I don't actually remember what event it was at, but it was only like a week ago. And this blew people's mind, because they thought we were coming up with the new... Um, like a fighter Z or some kind of Xenoverse extra thing. No, they're tacking on a sequel to a, uh, a line of games that has not had a game for about 13 years. And they do include like some old gameplay at the beginning of this trailer. Basically, it's like um, kind of like a blend of Xenoverse, um, My Hero Wants Justice kind of thing. It's like an arena fighter, but it's a little, little less... 3D, it's not as much going like up and around and underneath like in Xenoverse. So it's like a tiny bit more like a standard arena fighter, you know, Demon Slayer style. 
I don't know. I had never played too much of it, but I was aware of his existence. It's a cool game. And now that they're gonna release a, like, you know, a super polished 2023 AAA version, that is exciting. But unfortunately, of course, this was just like a teaser trailer. There's no release date, but hopefully it's this year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, this next one, I am weirdly excited. Hello, can I go back? I am weirdly excited for this game. <laughs> this game is called Pal World, and it's kind of, is this HD? Turn that up. It's like a satirical <laughs> Pokemon game. You can see um, some of the Pokemon are a little bit expi uh, inspired. We have seen some similar designs somewhere before. This is not a Pokemon game. It's called Pal World. And it's kind of meant to be a satirical, more uh, realistic or sadistic view where <laughs> the Pokemon or pals kind of, you know, get farmed and enslaved. And there's also gun fighting, <laughs> which is just such uh, a like, visual juxtaposition that you're not <laughs> confuses your mind so yeah um very suspiciously inspired looking designs obviously the graphics look amazing but seeing a little pokemon jump on your head or using him as a shield what the hell is this and then just shotgunning down enemies uh, yeah bazooka destroying a church little uh, like a cage full of these things so they can build your house what they're making guns in a factory it's horrible but Oh my god, I couldn't stop laughing when I watched this trailer at first. It's so, so stupid. And yeah, I kind of love it. It's like, what was <laughs> Fishing with the electrical. <laughs> oh my god. It's so stupid. So satirical. And I gotta play it. There's no way that when this comes out, I'm not playing it. And I think you guys should too. <laughs> Just take a break from anything serious and play a horrible, sadistic Pokemon game. Sounds great. Um, next up is something that's actually, you know, a little bit maybe better quality. Well, not that the, the PAL world didn't look good quality. It was beautiful. But this one is a AAA game of, of, dead, of the seven deadly sins, which is an anime that I still haven't really fully delved into and like, like fully continued watching her stuff, but I know a bunch about it. I've gone to watch it a bunch of times, and I think this game might be what gets me to actually fully become a Seven Deadly Sins fan. I know a lot of people, a lot of my friends really, really love it. I know it's a great <laughs> anime, I just haven't gotten into it. But this game, look how gorgeous this looks. It's kind of like an open world story style um, anime game where you've got obviously all the main characters have got different abilities for fighting and traversing. And it, it just looks amazing. Look at this gliding and then into that like unique style of water graphics. Very Genshin um, inspired, but it looks amazing. And yeah, just kind of like the My Hero One's Justice game. If you didn't know, that's actually the reason that I am a fan of My Hero. Before I saw the trailers for that game, I'd never watched My Hero. But then I was like, oh, there's a cool uh, anime fighting game coming out. I guess I'll watch it. And the rest is history. Here we are now. So maybe it'll be the same with this game. Looks cool. You know, it's got puzzles, it's got fighting, it's got open world traversing, and it's got amazing graphics and a decent looking fighting system. So honestly, what more could you want? It looks really, really good. But yet again, unfortunately, no release date. But it is this year. Okay, this is another bit of a goofy one. We're going from goofy to cool, from goofy to cool very quickly. But <laughs> for some reason, the PlayStation YouTube channel had this game like constantly appearing in my <laughs> recommended feed. It's called Infinity Nikki. And it's like, I don't know, a very, 
um, like aesthetic based game. It's just meant to look beautiful, but it's also like, like a fashionista, like Lolita style, beautiful, uh, like anime model, kind of, um, not like idol, but I don't know. It's got really gorgeous graphics, and like obviously awesome costume design that is just super high quality. You explore the world. I'm imagining it's kind of meant to be a bit more of a peaceful game, but as you can see, you can change clothes to get different abilities and such. You can move the nature, you can float around, you can fight people. There are some fight scenes later on, I'll skip it because it is a bit of a long trailer for a, a game that some people might not be interested in, but PlayStation showed me this so many times that I kind of got more and more into it every time. I just... It's meant to be focused on really awesome aesthetics and it does it well. It just looks gorgeous. And yeah, like, you can go a little, explore through the caves, and there are some fight scenes coming up, I promise. But yeah, there's tons of outfits and eventually... Oh yeah, you can like, I don't know, design them or like unlock more as you go. This is a giant screaming one. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on in this trailer. As you can see, there are some weird kind of fight scenes. You can float around, throw projectiles with different ones. Go under carts, have to dodge through waterfalls. I don't know. It's a, a weird looking blend of genres like parkour, exploration, peaceful, aesthetic, uh, like fighting monsters, puzzles. I don't know what's going on, but it, it looks cool. And honestly, that's all that really matters to me most of the time. But unfortunately, yet again, no release date, but it is gonna be this year, confirmed. So when it comes out, hey, if it's not a ridiculous price, I'm gonna try it out. It, it looks weird, but I'm gonna try it out. It looks cool. <laughs> and the next one, oh, oh, okay, I'm excited for this one because I'm actually thinking of playing it um, or today or whenever I get a chance. It's called Hi-Fi Rush and it, is kind of one of the games that is like, it's not technically an indie game, but it's a small game that is already considered by a lot of people to be like the game of the year. Like the best game that has been made in ages. It was like a shadow drop where they kind of just like released the game. There wasn't tons of advertising and stuff, but what makes it so good and Steam review, it's been out for about two months now. Steam reviews are like constant max review. It's overwhelmingly positive, as Steam says. People say that it's like a breath of fresh air of a game. It's not, like, it's not glitchy at all. It works completely. And people said it reminds you, reminds them of like old styles of games that are just meant to be fun and enjoyed as an enjoyable sitting experience. There's no sneaky microtransactions or ways to get you stuck like in the game for longer than you can. Or, or that you meant to, or DLCs or stuff, and it wasn't rushed to be released, so it doesn't have weird glitches and stuff. People just said, it's a game that is amazing, it feels amazing, and it doesn't feel like the developers are trying to abuse you. And oh, what the game actually is, is it's like this awesome action game that's based on like rock rhythm. So when you're fighting, the entire world like pulses to the song that's playing in the background whenever you play, and it's got an awesome soundtrack. So as you fight, if you attack with the beat of the song, you get like stronger attacks. And if you like, you have to learn different types of syncopation and like emphasis on different beats to get different combo enders to do lots of damage. And as you saw before, when you're doing parkour, the like world kind of moves and pulses to the beat of the song as well. So that's how you have to like jump through lasers and stuff. But it looks amazing. And I've never seen such overwhelmingly positive reviews for when a, a game comes out, especially in the last like five years. Usually it's like, okay, this game, you know, it's okay, or, or it's crap. So a game that is this overwhelmingly positive and beloved by people so instantly, yeah, I'm gonna try it out. And like a rock rhythm, like action game, hell yes, that sounds awesome. So it's out already, I recommend you play it because I'm gonna go play it like after I finish this. Next is Naruto Storm Collections, co Connections, and it's a game that's coming out after Naruto Storm 4, obviously, which has just had its final round of DLC. 
Um, apparently, it's set to release in 2023. Some people are skeptical of that, but hey, they said what they said. And yeah, obviously, it's just meant to be like a crossover between Naruto and Boruto Storm games. Will it be the last one in the series? Potentially, that's kind of what it points towards being like, you know, the crossover, but come on. It's a storm game. There's no way it's the final one. That's impossible. <laughs> but yeah, it's a storm game. If it's really cool, has some, I don't know, cool new graphics, mechanics, systems. Yeah, I'll give it a try. Okay, next is Zenless Zone Zero. Say that 10 times fast. Which is a game by Mihoyo. So the Genshin Impact people. And it's kind of a, um, a team, more action-based fighter than Gen Genshin. Genshin has fighting, but it's a little more focused on the action fighting in this game. Whoa, my voice is... I, uh, whoa, hello. <laughs> it's early in the morning. But yeah, the character designs... Awesome, awesome. Every character that you get shown for a like quick microsecond in this trailer, you're like, whoa, that's so cool. Whoa, what an interesting design. Whoa, you put in a furry fox. Oh, you put in like a ma yeah, they they did. And then when we get introduced to the fighting, obviously it looks good as well. This trailer is actually pretty old by now. I'm pretty sure it came out like last year, maybe even like five months ago. But it already looks good and it's gonna look even better when we see more footage of it and when it actually comes out. And it's MiHoYo, so obviously their game's going to look beautiful, have, you know, look really smooth. And all that really matters to me now is when we see more trailers, you get to find out what the action, the battle system is actually like. Like how unique are all the characters to each other, which is, you know, a little bit of a problem we had with Gotham Knights where every character was pretty similar. But if, like, the characters are unique, there's cool battle mechanics, heck yeah, I'll give a, another MiHoYo game a try. They've become pretty infamous, so I'm sure they wouldn't release a flop, especially when they've got such cool character designs. Gotta make sure you use them well. Yeah, as you can see from those little snippets of gameplay, the action not only looks great, it looks psycho and crazy and big and massive and just looks fun. Which, at the end of the day, like I said before, is all that matters. Okay, next is a bit of a random one. Um, I might not play the whole trailer. It's Honor of Kings World, which is based on the franchise Honor of Kings, which I believe is a game that's famous in China that's like a League of Legends type, like very closely a League of Legends type, and now they've clearly got enough money to make a gorgeous looking open world style game that's kind of like Monster Hunter World-esque with its combat and stuff. And obviously this being a franchise that I had no idea about before, the thing that caught me in was the graphics, it looks so beautiful. If you want to wear it, there was, um, Oh, what was that game that really flopped recently? With the... Uh, there was um, a magic elemental game that just came out and people hated it because it was really bad. What, oh my, I can't remember its name. Um, but this looks like a better version of that. With that like magic traversing that, I don't know, wind or water carrying themselves through the air. And then when you get to the combat, it starts to look even cooler. So, okay. Actually, that one does not look particularly cool. For some reason, it looks like there's frame drops, even in a trailer. <laughs> but some of the other fight scenes, if there are no frame drops, it looks really beautiful. Like, these monsters they're fighting against looks amazing. The way the characters, like, move and use their bows and swords just seems so dynamic and uh, smooth, but also gorgeous with the particle effects. Like, those kind of, like, zigzag and sparkles and... <laughs> you can tell I'm not a graphics designer, because I use <laughs> the worst words possible to describe things. But you're seeing what I'm seeing. You're seeing that this game looks hella freaking cool. And just absolutely gorgeous, stylish, 
and a beautiful, beautiful graphic system and fighting system and like movement system with the way they were gliding. Like it just all looks awesome. And yeah, I want a, a franchise that I do not care about at all, but if they release a cool game, I'm gonna play it. So that's Honor of King's World. Next is another um, similar game to the last two we just watched, Blue Protocol. So it's kind of, you know, an action style. Um, I don't believe it's really open world, but it's like, you know, third person action story style made by Bandai Namco. And okay, this is a very slow trailer. Basically, to me, it looks pretty similar to the Zen Zen... What is that? Zen 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 Zen? No, Zenless Zone Zero. It's... Did I miss some cool stuff? Yeah, it's like a fighter, you fight against stuff, it's got cool character designs, it's got really good, like, anime-style graphics. And it's got an interesting fighting system with, like, a lot of types of upgrades. Hopefully it isn't too, um, microtransaction rot, which some people are a little scared of, but hey. It looks cool, and I, I'm not going to judge it for making any accusations like that until it's actually out. Oh. Luke Protocol. Looks cool. Okay, now we're getting to some slightly less typical ones for my channel, and it's kind of branching out to some other genres, but I just saw, that, saw their trailers and thought they were really cool. So this is Planet of Lana, which it's like a Swedish or Swiss um, uh, game studio that made this game, and it's kind of like a, po a, po a post-apocalyptic, um, like, I'm not really sure, a puzzle action game, like platformer-ish. It just has a really, really interesting um, art style for a post-apocalyptic game. And yeah, there's a longer video about the developers talking about like how they're working on it and it just it seems really cool. I'm not someone that's super into these styles of games, but I saw the trailer and yeah, the way they seem to be designing the visuals and planning the kind of action-based um, puzzle platformy, it just looks really, really cool. And this isn't really like a a style, genre, or aesthetic I've seen too much of, so it's very intriguing. But yeah, like, you can see, <laughs> this trailer is just a girl running. I don't know if they include any actual gameplay. No, they don't. Great. Um, and the other trailer is not here? Hello, my yeah. name is Adam Kranius. This is a guy. He helped make it. Oh, wait, I think there's some in-game stuff here. So as you can see, it's like 2D um, puzzles with the little pet and stuff, but then there's a lot of action scenes with the crazy spiders that try to kill you and stuff. Looks cool. Next, um, we have two games that are kind of like this 16-bit style of interesting game, which, again, is not a genre I'm particularly well-versed in, but this one looks super interesting because it's a 16-bit, like, 2D sprite game, but it's actually 3D, so in that scene where he was walking towards you, it's actually the character walking around in a 3D space, but as a 2D sprite, and yeah, that's basically what caught me. I just thought the, the art style was super interesting, and it's also not a turn-based fighter, which a lot of 16-bit games that look like this are. There's actually really cool 3D combat with dodging, build bridges, I suppose, and like platforming. So you can see, you can dodge in and out wards of the screen, so it's probably 3D, but 2D sprites always just look so gorgeous and charismatic that having a 2D sprite in this cool, like, 3D game, again, anime style, yep, I'm keeping it on brand with Mr. Elberon and anime games. It looks cool. It looks really, really, really cool. And yeah, it's absolutely not something I would normally be interested in, but just because of how well it was clearly designed, now I am. And the next one is kind of a more 16-bit, but like 
over your head. Um, top down 2D style game, like Pokemon games, which again, just like I said, it's not a, a genre I'm particularly well versed in, but the character designs and little world designs look really, really compelling to me. But unfortunately is a turn-based fighter, which does turn me off a little bit, but it does look really, really cool. I like the way that these guys move and look, and like, yeah, the look of everything that they're moving around just looks so intriguing to me that I'm, I'm willing to test out new waters of genres that I'm usually not particularly interested in. But yeah, that, oh, I didn't even say what it was. This is Sea of Stars. And the next one is another, like, calm, chilling game. It's called Season, A Letter to the Future. It actually just came out as well. But I thought, I don't know, it looked really kind of nice and wholesome and calm. So it's about this woman who's like traveling around on her bike around her community and stuff and like kind of taking photos and like documenting what the world is like before everything ends because it's somehow about this season that is coming to an end and that means everything will be over so she's the one that's documenting like life and what was beautiful about the world before it ends and yeah you i think i recommend you watch the trailers because even just the way the trailers talk to you and the lines they have it it really hit me in a in a hard place that i wasn't expecting to be hit in by a random game trailer yeah, definitely a different, different vibe to what we usually used to on this channel. But it just looked really peaceful and really, really nice. So yeah, I'll give it a try. Okay, now a little bit more on brand for me. Uh, also coming out this year is Street Fighter 6. Now I'm going to just show a, a small amount of fighting games. I won't go too overboard. I know this is not my fighting game channel, but yes, if you're interested in any of these games, go check out my second channel, Mr. Alberonan FGC, where I cover games like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and Guilty Gear and when you go yeah, looking for strength, these fighting games. It's not like Street game. Fighter 6, this journey doesn't have a I don't know if it needs introduction, actually maybe I should introduce it because this is my anime channel and maybe there's a few less fighting game players here, but if you've ever been interested in giving a try to Street Fighters or Mortal Kombat's or Tekken's or anything, I think Street Fighter 6 is the go for you. This game is the most complete package of any fighting game that has ever existed and it also is so amazingly designed in the combat wise. I'll talk about that after I talk about this, but as you can see on the screen, there's like an open world exploration of the Street Fighter world where you can design your own character, um, like fight people on the streets, learn new moves and stuff. So there's so much single player content, which is not something you'll find in basically any other fighting game. Being able to move around the world, explore, do your own like side missions and stuff and design a character. That is such rare stuff to find in a fighting game. So if that ever interests you more than like, you know, competitively fighting against other players, then this is obviously the game for you. And when you are interested in fighting against other players and, you know, getting good as they say, this game is also a really, really good addition for beginners. And a lot of games have been doing this recently, trying to cater towards beginners by making the game more simple so they can get more players. But I believe once again that this game is doing it the best because they still have the same kind of complex Street Fighter system with six different buttons, and command normals and interesting juggle systems. But they've got these universal mechanics that make the game so much more accessible to different- It's not an HD, I can't believe this. <laughs> they've got these mechanics like um, a drive rush and a drive impact. This move here, where it allows people who are beginning the game just to get the game actually flowing. You don't have to know how to do footsies and your combos and or like do inputs for a DP. You can just press two buttons together and you get this big old armored um, combo starting plus on block special move it only costs you one thing so there's, there's a lot of things that cater towards beginners but there are also interesting mechanics that are really um complicated and dynamic for people who are also adept at fighting games so whatever level you are at 
at fighting games, whether you're the slightest bit interest or you're an absolute fanatic like me, you have to play this game because it's got content for everyone. It's got tons of single player goofy content. Also, it's got tons of offline stuff where you can design a character and go in these weird modes where like bulls run at you, where you can give yourself your own modes. And also the, the actual battle system for competitive play is to die for. I recommend this game. It's got such cool characters, it's gonna be a hit. So do yourself a favor and get into it early. <laughs> the next game is a bit similar, it's Mortal Kombat 12, which unfortunately I don't have a trailer or anything for <laughs> because it doesn't have a trailer, but it has been revealed to be coming out this year. And it was revealed in a way that they probably were not wanting. There was like kind of a, um, like an investor's stock economic people kind of financial call where they talk about the the Warner Brothers like assets and stuff that are coming out in 2022 based on the different financial years and Mortal Kombat 12 was accidentally talked about and so that's the announcement that we have that it is coming out this year and that it is even Mortal Kombat 12 if you're not aware of the drama the developers of Mortal Kombat and Injustice have been radio silence basically after Mortal Kombat 11 and we didn't really know what game was coming next. We get an Injustice or a Mortal Kombat or a completely different game. But now it's confirmed, we're gonna get Mortal Kombat 12 and it is gonna be this year. But other than that, there's not too much news. There's the big guy, Ed Boon. He's the, you know, the head of NetherRealm Studios. He's always trolling on Twitter, always doing some goofy stuff, replying to people. So there's some characters that are like kind of confirmed like Tremor and Tanya and stuff that he's been a little bit too obvious with his teasing about. But other than little tiny tweet pieces like that, we, we know nothing about this game. But you bet your ass, you know for sure that I'm gonna be all over it. Mortal Kombat and Realm games and Injustice are my jam. So it could be absolute trash and I'm still gonna play it. And finally, we have another fighting game that, um, yeah. It's Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, but just like basically all Arxis games have been getting this the rollback treatment recently, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus is no exception, except instead of just getting an update with rollback, they are re-releasing the game as like an ultimate edition, or it's actually just technically a new game, where they've got updated, um, like, you know, slightly improved graphics, more characters, more stages, and like more um, like better online modes, obviously with better connection with the rollback netcode. And it's also got some like cool um, goofy things. Like I don't think they show it in this trailer, but part of the online system while you wait for a, a game or something is, you remember Fall Guys, right? They've got like a Fall, guy, Fall Guys style like mass, um, parkour game where you just like run around like the obstacle course and try to get to the thing until you find a match or something. I don't know. It looked goofy, but it looked so cool. Little kind of fun, charismatic stuff like this is what makes a game legendary. And the Grand Blue Fantasy game, um, uh, fighting game is one that I've always been like, really have my eye on. When there's a tournament, I like to watch it. It looks super interesting, but it's a game that I kind of just missed. Like when it came out, it was in the middle of the pandemic and stuff, so it didn't hit off as well as it could have. And I always felt like I was kind of just behind, and if I join in now, I'm like three years too late and I'd never be like fully into it as much as I am with other games. But now that it's re-releasing with, you know, action-packed new characters, new actions, new balance, and tons of fun new stuff, this fresh release is totally gonna be the way that it gets me into the franchise. Because now I'll be like, well, guess we're starting anew. I'm joining in with the new game. And yeah. So it's already a game that I've been interested in playing and now they're just releasing it again, but better. <laughs> yes, please. I will play that. Oh, wait. Hold on. There's two other short little goofy ones that I forgot to show. This one's called Thirsty Suitors. And it's about, like, the main character. She... I don't really know. <laughs> the graphics aren't amazing, but it's pretty charming in its own way. 
But she basically just is in this stupid game where she has to like fight her exes. And I know that sounds really lame, but then as you watch the trailer, it becomes more and more like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> like, wait until we get into a bit of action. I don't know what's going on. Why, why is he throwing cars? What's she doing? And she summons a massive version of her mom to hit him with a sandal. I don't know. It's a goofy game. <laughs> I don't know. Kind of like some of the other weird games that I've been shown. Um, it just kind of caught my eye as looking really stupid. <laughs> but really, really charming for that. I don't know, there's cooking as well, but it's mainly like fighting exes and... Technically there's stuff talking about like dealing with relationships, but it's so funny. I don't care. So that's Thirsty Suitors, and then next is a game that I'm actually really interested in. It only came out like three days ago. It's called Romancelvania. It's like about vampire and you fight things. It's also like a dating um, show style game because your, I don't know, wife or something died. So you're going around and like you go on a dating show with these weirdly hot monsters and like date and also fight them and it looks so weird like I don't know what is he fighting against here there's a there's a, a scarecrow pumpkin lady with pumpkin boobs and like I don't know what he's fighting jumping on washing machines summoning spikes runs over people with with the lawnmower to blow them up you know some things really make me feel like I'm losing my mind, but I'm glad this game makes me feel like, actually, you know, I'm totally fine. It's people making this game that have lost their mind. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> it looks so strange, but um, as I've said maybe about 15 times, I'm absolutely going to play it because it looks so silly. I can't stop myself, so I'm actually probably going to do that today as well. So that is the end of this Actually, surprisingly long list of games that I'm looking forward to this year. Hopefully, um, I don't know, don't go bankrupt. Hopefully there's a lot of sales, because I'm going to need it after playing all these games. But yeah, let me know if there are any um, big obvious games that I missed that you guys are looking forward to and that are cool releases, particularly ones that are relevant to this channel, anime related games, but anything that's big and cool is cool and I'm interested in. So yeah. Let me know what you're looking forward to down at the bottom and if any of these games are intriguing to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you somewhere in whatever the, whatever the next video is. Bye.